Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this talk. I'm going to talk about constructing locally leakage res resilient linear secret sharing schemes. Uh, this is a joint work with Maji, Hanat, and Tom. So in this talk, we're going to talk about locally leakage resilient secret sharing schemes. So in a classical setting, in a secret sharing schemes, you have a dealer that takes a secret S and sample N secret shares, S1, S2, and Sn. The security notion guarantees that uh, for any unauthorized set of secret shares, um, it is uncorrelated with the secret S. So what if the adversary uh, leaks local information from every secret share? For example, it learns a bit BI from every secret share SI. So is the joint distribution of the leakage correlated with the secret S or not? Locally leakage resilient secret sharing schemes ensure that the joint distribution of the leakage is uncorrelated with the secret S. So why do we study leakage resilient secret sharing? It turns out that this is a very useful primitive and connected to many other fields. For example, in this fascinating problem uh, called repairing uh, error correcting code, uh, where the objective is that you learn minimum information from every secret share and uh, you want to re fully reconstruct a secret using these informations. So intuitively, if you are able to reconstruct a secret S, then the secret sharing schemes is not leakage resilient. And on the other hand, the leakage resilience uh, asks for a much stronger security guarantee that not only you cannot reconstruct the secret, uh, this information you learn from every secret shares actually reveal no information about the secret. So it, uh, the leakage re resilient secret sharing schemes has also been used as a building block to construct a secure multi-party computation protocols that is resilient to local leakage attacks. And it also has been used to build other primitives, such as non-malleable secret sharing schemes. So since the introduction of leakage resilient secret sharing, there has been two main research directions. So the first research direction is to construct new secret sharing schemes that are designed to be leakage resilient. So we have a fascinating body of works that construct secret sharing schemes that is robust against many, many very sophisticated leakage family. Uh, however, these constructions usually incurs a significant overhead and loses uh, some algebraic structure such as linearity. And these crucial algebraic structures uh, could be very, uh, uh, very important for the application of secret sharing schemes. So therefore, there is another uh, line of works that investigate the leakage resilience of prominent secret sharing schemes, such as uh, Shamir secret sharing and additive secret sharing schemes. Since, since the application of uh, uh, secret sharing schemes usually uh, uh, use such prominent secret sharing schemes, this line of work have significant impact on the real world implementations and our work belongs to this line of research. So let me set up the context for this work first. So in this work, we consider Macy's secret sharing schemes corresponding to a random linear code. So a Macy secret sharing schemes works as follows. So given any code C, which is just a subset of the uh, vector space, uh, you can, const you can uh, construct the secret sharing schemes as follows. So let's say you want to sample the secret share of a secret S. To do this, you just sample a random code word from this code C, condition on that the first coordinate is uh, is identical to the secret S. Then the rest of the coordinates are uh, the corresponding secret shares. Um, so it turns out that uh, if, the, uh, code, if the code C is linear, then the Macy secret sharing schemes is also linear. And it turns out that every linear secret sharing schemes is a Macy secret sharing schemes corresponding to some linear code. 
So for example, uh, the well-known Shamir secret sharing schemes is nothing but Mace's secret sharing schemes corresponding to read Solomon code. And additive secret sharing schemes corresponds to the parity code. So we consider Macy's secret sharing schemes corresponding to a random linear code. So how do you sample a random linear code? Uh, you just sample the generator matrix G uh, uniformly at random. And note that um, since we consider an exponentially large field F, when you sample a random matrix G over exponentially large field F, the random matrix is maximum distance separable with overwhelming probability. And when the code word G happens to be an MDS code, the Macy's secret sharing schemes corresponding to G is nothing but a threshold secret sharing schemes with N parties and K plus one reconst reconstruction threshold, uh, where K plus one is the dimension of the code. Okay. So um, now we're ready to present our results. So let's, let's lambda be the security parameter, which represents the size of each secret share. So remember that every secret share is an element from the field F. Therefore, this, uh, the size of the field is roughly two to the lambda. And we assume M bits are leaked from every secret share. Our result is as follows. So you pick any n to be the number of parties. You pick any k such that k plus one is the reconstruction threshold. And then let m be any constant. If you have the guarantee that k, the roughly the reconstruction threshold, is greater than half of n, which is the number of parties, then the Macy's secret sharing schemes corresponding to a random matrix G is m bit locally leakage resilient except with um, exponential, exponentially decaying probab probability. So uh, we, um, we do need the number of parties n to be less than the security parameter to ensure that the G is MDS with high probability. So as a representative example, you can set the number of uh, reconstruction hold to be one third of lambda and n to be half of lambda. So our second result complement our first result, uh, where we show a, a bottleneck for the existing ana analytic approaches. So uh, in, the, uh, in their seminal work, Ben Homoda et al. introduced this uh, innovative Fourier analytic approach, which is adopted by all existing work, including this one, to prove leakage resilience. We show that this uh, approach is bound to fail when the number of, uh, when the reconstruction threshold is less than half of the number of parties. So in detail, this, this approach used a Fourier analytic expression as, an approxy, as a proxy to upper bound the statistical distance. Uh, we consider the leakage function to be the indicator function of quadratic residuity, that is the leakage function output one if the corresponding secret share is a quadratic residue and zero otherwise. We prove that given any linear secret sharing schemes, this Fourier analytic proxy is at least a half, uh, at least a one for this leakage function. So remember that this proxies used up to upper bound the statistical distance. If it, if it is greater than one, then it always gave an inconsequential bound. So due to this, um, the first result uh, I just present to you is actually the optimal result uh, one can hope to prove use the existing technical approach. And to prove leakage re resilience when K is less than half of N, uh, requires significantly different ideas, even just for this one function, uh, the indicator for quadratic residuity. So this is actually motivated uh, because the Shamir secret sharing schemes, uh, Shamir secret sharing based uh, MPC protocol 
is multiplication friendly when k, the degree k is less than half of the number of parties. And in some ongoing works, we show that uh, uh, we, we use a, a combinatorial argument to show that um, you can actually prove leakage resilience um, when k is less than half of n if the leakage family L is small. OK, so um, uh, before I present the technical highlight, let me uh, 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 summarize some of the relevant prior works. So in the uh, original work by Ben Helmoda et al., they show that if you are given any MDS code G, the Macy's secret sharing schemes corresponding to G is leakage resilient when M bit is leaked, when, when M bit is leaked from every secret share, as long as a K is greater than uh, a, 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 a K is greater than a constant fraction of N, where this constant fraction depends on the bit leaked from every secret share. So roughly when one bit is leaked from every secret share, you need that K is greater than 0.85 times N. And this fraction increases as the number of bit leaked increases. So in particular, Shamir secret sharing schemes is one bit leakage resilient if K is greater than 0.85 times N. So to compare their work with ours, their construction is deterministic because they, they, their uh, proof works for any fixed MDS code G. And they prove that K is uh, it is leakage resilient as long as k is greater than uh, delta m times n, which is at least 0.85. While our construction is randomized with exponential fail failure probability, but we'll prove that uh, k need only be uh, at least half of n. So in another uh, our recent work, uh, we consider the Shamir secret sharing schemes with randomly chosen evaluation places. And we consider a severely restricted leakage model that we call physical bit leakage. So in this model, every secret share uh, is, uh, is, a, is, is stored in their natural, natural bi binary representation. And the leakage function can learn the bit stored at spe specified locations. So for this restricted uh, leakage family, we show that with overwhelming probability, Shamir secret sharing schemes with randomly chosen evaluation places is leakage re resilient, even if the reconstruction threshold is only two and the number of parties can be uh, any, uh, any polynomial in the security parameter. And the number of bit leaked from every secret share can be an arbitrary constant M. So um, uh, note that this work also employs the existing Fourier analytic approach, and they prove a result. They prove that it is leakage resilient even when k is less than half of n. However, this result does not contradict the bottleneck we presented because they only considered uh, physical bit leakage. In particular, the counterexample that we raised that testing whether a field element is a quadratic residue or not cannot be learned through a uh, physical bit leakage. And to put uh, this work into perspective, um, they also consider a randomized construction, but their code generator matrix is sampled not fully random, but from this uh, distribution. And they consider a, a very res severely restricted leakage family, uh, namely the physical bit leakage, but they prove a very strong result that the reconstruct reconstruction threshold can be a constant as low as two and an unbounded uh, number of parties. Okay, so now let me give you a very brief uh, high, uh, technical overview. <clears throat> so recall that we want to prove that Macy's secret sharing schemes corresponding to a random matrix is leakage resilient as long as K is greater than half of N. So the, the major challenging part about this result is that a typical union bound would not uh, have worked. 
So for example, consider this uh, very straightforward proof strategy. Let's say you fix the leakage function L and you prove that most code are secure against this L. And then you union bound over all the possible choices of the leakage function L and that gives you the result. Uh, however, this won't work. Why? Uh, because the total number of leakage functions is, is very large. For example, let's assume that you are learning one bit from every secret share. So the leakage function L is, um, uh, the domain is the field F, the range is zero, one. So the number of leakage functions is two to the power of F. Uh, the number of leakage function for every secret share is two to the power of F. And then the total number of leakage functions from n shares is the nth power of this. So the important point is that the number of leakage functions is double exponential because the field size is single exponential. Uh, in comparison, if you look at our family of constructions, the constructions is solely determined by the generator matrix, which is of dimension roughly k by n. So the number of uh, uh, constructions is f to the power k times n um, is roughly this much, which is singly exponential. So the number of leakage functions is much, much larger than the family of constructions. So you cannot hope to use a union bound over the choices of L to prove leakage res resilience. So the technical novelty of our proof is that we identified a new set of tests so uh, the proof chooses gamma, sigma, and a uh, appropriately, and they are constants. So a test is specified by a product space V, which is V1 cross V2 cross Vn. So um, the, uh, every Vi is of a constant size gamma. So we say a code word C uh, is bad, or fails, fails this test V if a large fraction of the coordinates fall inside this uh, VI. So that is the number of uh, the, the set of indices where CI is in VI. If this set is too large, we say this code word is bad. And we say that a code G passes the test if only few code words less than A which is appropriately chosen constant a, a to the power n code words are bad. So to give you some intuition about this test, um, so if you fix any leakage function L1, L2, and Ln, where Li is the leakage function on the i share, the Vi will be the set of uh, field elements that are uh, uh, who has large Fourier coefficient corresponding to Li. And if a code passes all the uh, test V, we're going to prove that it is leakage resilient against all the uh, leakage functions. Uh, so the intuition behind that is that for any leakage functions, this code will only have few code words that has many co coordinates with large Fourier coefficient. So this uh, set of tests, this definition is inspired by literature in pseudo-randomness. So intuitively, um, if, if, if an object uh, uh, has a low correlation with all the Fourier characters, you can think of it as being pseudo-random. So here we are saying that a code G is pseudo-random if it does not have too many code words that are not pseudo-random. So, uh, the benefit of defining this, this uh, uh, set of tests is that the number of tests is actually much smaller. So here is a simple counting argument. Um, remember that the, the, a test is specified by a product space V, where every VI is of a constant size gamma. So the number of tests is roughly this much, which is single exponential. In comparison, the total number of leakage functions is double exponential. So given this set of tests, we are going to prove leakage res resilience as follows. So you fix any test V and you prove that the most Gs will pass this, this test V. 
This is uh, based on the combinatorial argument. And then you can use a union bound, thanks to the fact that number of tests is small, uh, to prove that most of G's passes all the tests. And the third step is that given any code G that passes all the tests, we're going to prove that G is leakage resilient. And this step is uh, based on the existing Fourier analytic argument uh, introduced by Ben Helmold et al. So this step is where we inherently requires K to be greater than half of N. So finally, let me say a few words about the bottleneck we proved. So recall that we show that the existing Fourier analytic approach cannot prove leakage resilience when K less than half of N. And in particular, it cannot even prove leakage resilience for this single function that is testing whether a secret share is a quadratic residue or not. So if you are familiar with the, the, the uh, Fourier analytic approach, uh, the intuition behind that is that um, the quadratic residuity function is the function that maximizes the L1 norm of the Fourier coefficient. This is the intuitively why uh, this is the most devastating case for the current uh, proof strategy. So as I mentioned earlier, we uh, in some ongoing works, we partially make progress to resolve this by using a purely combinatorial argument to prove, the, uh, to prove that uh, for any small enough leakage family L, a random code G is leakage resilient against this L. Well, this L could potentially contain this uh, uh, quadratic residuity function. And we also have other ongoing works that uh, identifies the optimal leakage attacks in appropriate settings. So uh, with that, I would like to conclude my talk and I will refer you to the full version of our paper for, for the additional subtleties in the proof. Thank you. <laughs>